Today is a day that we remember. Today is a day that we honor. And I encourage you, in fact, I, I was reading a bunch of stuff in, leading up to today on the history of Memorial Day, the significance of how it's even changed. It used to be Decoration Day because the flowers were in bloom about this time. It used to be the May 30th was Memorial Day, and then they changed it in 1971 to be the last Monday in May, which actually impacted it quite a bit because it <clears throat> became, for many, the kickoff of summer instead of Memorial Day. One more three-day weekend that we get to have fun and barbecue. And there's nothing wrong with having fun and barbecuing and being at the lake, but I want to challenge you to consider the depths of sacrifice that was made for us to even have the freedom to gather in this room. Amen? I'm going to do something that we've never done, and I'm going to ask... Uh, if I could get a representative from each branch of the military. This isn't, a, this isn't Veterans Day. In fact, any veteran will tell you, don't thank me for serving on Memorial Day because it's not about those that are alive. It's about those that have passed, that have paid the price. Do we have, uh, um, I'm sure around here we have plenty of the uh, Army National Guard. Do we have, have somebody that served in the Army National Guard? Be, be willing to raise your hand. Okay, Jason, come on. Jason, come on up here. Uh, we have Navy. Navy in the room. Who's someone in the Navy? Don't be bashful. <laughs> we have any Navy? Where's Brian Dempsey? I know he's here. Somebody, no, okay, Brian, Brian, come on up here. <clears throat> I know you probably need a Marine escort, so do we have a Marine? Uh, do we have a Marine in the room? Mr. Foy? No? Don't want to come up? Oh, I, know, um, I know my brother was, so Rory, come on up. And um, Air Force. I know we have Air Force in the room. Bryce, come on up. So these, these four guys, you guys can stand right here. And actually, I'm going to send you on a mission. There was a, a quote that I had read recently. Um, that talked about how uh, a young man asked an old man, what's the, what's the heaviest burden in life that you can carry? And the old man responded, to not have a burden to carry, to not have a responsibility, to not have something to do of importance. And I'm actually going to ask um, at least well, two of you, if we just take these two right here, and go grab that American flag with the, with the base and bring it over here. Um, one of the things that I've been praying about this for quite a while because uh, I served in the military as well and I have a deep appreciation for what this country stands for and we often pledge allegiance to a flag and if you're a Royal Ranger you also pledge allegiance to another flag the Christian flag and, and I've wrestled with that I'll pledge allegiance to the Bible God's holy word but I've struggled with pledging allegiance to another flag, and just some of the symbolism of that, and, and be praying. Gentlemen, come on over here. <clears throat> Been praying about how to do this, because um, I believe if I'm going to pledge allegiance to something, it better honor God. God better be number one in that, or I'm not going to pledge allegiance to it. I'm not going to pledge allegiance even to a church that doesn't put God first. And when I think about pledging allegiance to our country, one of the things that we... We talk about, and I've seen churches try to do this, is that we are one nation under God. How do, we, how do we embody that? How do we demonstrate that? And I've seen churches try to do different things, and I've seen, um, well, in fact, a, a, a Baptist church did this down south, where they actually, and it was quite controversial, they lowered the American flag a little bit, and they flew a Christian flag over it. Now, most military guys would be like, wait a minute. You know, we don't do it like that. And thinking about it and praying about it and just sitting in here and praying and looking at that flag over in the corner, I, just, I believe God giving this idea. And maybe it's, been, maybe it's been done before. I don't know. But oftentimes, and you'll notice this, on top of the American flag, you have an eagle. It's a beautiful bird, but I don't pledge allegiance to a bird. And I don't believe that a bird is the backbone of our nation. It's a powerful symbol, but it's not the backbone of our nation. So what we did was we actually took 
the eagle off and we put a cross on top. Because when I look at our nation, symbolically we are one nation under God. Now our flag isn't inferior to, to any. And it is a powerful symbol. And if you want to you wanna cry, you want to shed some tears, watch. Uh, you can even YouTube Marines folding the American flag. It is a powerful ceremony. The honor that is paid to a symbol that blood is shed for. But I believe what makes America great isn't our military. That's wonderful. What makes America great is the principles that we fight for, the burden that we carry to spread to our country, to, to, to our world. So I couldn't think of any better symbol than to say that the backbone that holds the flag, the backbone that holds and supports our nation is Christ himself. Amen? So we put this, this, this uh, cross on top. And actually, if I could ask, Jason, if you could pick that flag up. And the, and, and the American flag doesn't bow to any, but we're going to bow this. And actually, gentlemen, if you could stand across and each of you hold the flag as this is bowed down. Each of you take that so it doesn't touch the ground. Thank you. And on this cross... We talk about blood being shed. I have a red marker here. And, and uh, I believe, now, whether you think this is necessarily the way to do it or not, I think there's powerful symbolism in this, but we are one nation under God. And I'll write that on here. And blood red. One nation. God. If you could stand that back up and have the uh, red side facing our congregation. With these gentlemen standing here as veterans, though Memorial Day is not about veterans, uh, we recognize that we are a nation that is great because in humility, we kneel before the one and only God. And people have shed blood to defend that right. And if you are here and you have a loved one that is deceased, that, that has served, that either served in the military, that served as a fireman, as a, uh, a paramedic, that served as a police officer, that is, now, is, is no longer with us, and you hold them in your memory, would you please stand with us right now? Because the families of those loved ones feel the hurt, feel the pain, feel the struggle almost as much. And this morning we honor you. We remember the sacrifice that you've made as well with your loved ones. And there's a powerful song that when I do a funeral, I don't want to say they're my favorite funerals, but they're the most powerful when there is a, a, a military burial and taps is played at the end. I think if there's any time that I cry, it's during those moments. And in, in, because we, we believe that we are stronger united, if the rest of us would stand, and we're going to play taps. And if you're military, uh, they passed an ordinance a while back that civilians, or that mil former military veterans are allowed to salute uh, while uh, in civilian attire. So we encourage you, if you're a veteran, if you would salute. Uh, pay respect while taps is being played. Uh, and if this, at this time, Cody, if you could play that. This is from the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for great men and women that lay down their life for friends, for strangers. We thank you that you did the same for us. Father, today we take a moment to remember those fallen, those lives that were cut short, those skills and talents and abilities that could have been used for so many other great things, and yet they paid the sacrifice. Lord, we take this weekend and we honor and remember. Help us to cherish those people in our hearts, and if we don't know any, Lord, that we would learn some. And Father, that you would instill within us those virtues as well, to cherish life, to fight for freedom, and to walk humbly before our God. We pray this now in the powerful name of Jesus, and all God's people said, Amen. 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 Thank you, gentlemen. And church, you may be seated. Hmm. That was a little different than I actually really planned for this service to go, and I don't have nearly enough time to get through my message today. Uh, so I'm not going to try to get through the whole thing. I think God was really moving in our time of worship, and I always want to make room for that. I think it's appropriate to honor those that, uh, that we are sending off to other parts of the world. It's important to honor those that have fallen, and I think even important to recognize what makes our nation great. And now, when I pledge allegiance to this flag, I will have a whole new perspective of what I'm pledging allegiance to. It's not, just a, it's not just a nation not under God. It's not just a nation under any God. You know, you can say it's separation of church and state, so we have to have separate flags. I don't, I don't see it that way. I think we are stronger when we have something to stand for. Like they say, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. So we stand on the virtues that we receive from our God, from our Creator. Amen? So, the church is stronger when we have a purpose, when we are fighting for something right. Our nation is stronger when it works with our faith. So when we work together, church and state, we achieve so much more. Now, I had actually on my notes today to share out of Isaiah chapter 43, and, and I'm probably not even going to get to much of, of what I wanted to talk, to talk about out of Luke chapter 8, because today uh, we're talking about, um, I actually titled this message, Falling Up. And the scripture, I, spe- I suppose specifically, out of, out of Luke chapter uh, 18, start at verse 14, I tell you, um, this man went to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but he who humbles himself will be exalted. See, life doesn't revolve around me, does it? And yet we live in a culture that is increasingly me-focused. And there was, there was a picture that I'd seen a while ago, I tried to find it this morning, of young men getting off uh, a boat on D-Day, and, and you, maybe you've seen the movie, maybe you've seen Private, Saving Private Ryan, in which these men are just gunned down. And yet some make it through, and some take the beach. And we see that, and it's a powerful moment <clears throat> of seeing the bravery of these young men, and then to see some pictures of how our culture is behaving nowadays. Some of the identity crisis. I don't know who I am. I don't even know who I am as a man. Maybe I should try on some makeup. Maybe I should try some different stuff. And I'm not here to mock anyone. I'm not here to put anyone down. But I feel as a nation, we are losing our identity. And it's a, strug- it's a very real struggle. And this is, this is one of the powerful reasons why I believe we have to find our identity in Christ. We have to stand for what's right and true. 
and always come back on our knee before our God. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I like some good plastic songs, right? Uh, you know, in fact, even thinking about Memorial Day, maybe you'd consider it uh, like a Fourth of July day, but that song, Born in the USA, you know what that song, you go back a little ways, born, you know, born in the, I'm not going to go any further because I don't, I don't, <laughs> but every time I hear that riff, I'm like, yeah, right? I mean, just that old jamming on the guitar. Anybody else you identify? Like, you hear that, it's nostalgic. You're like, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, and and you, there, there's, they talk about how these, this, there's this idea that we have these neural pathways in our brain that as we get older, they get more established. They even say this concept that you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Why is that? Because the dog knows what it likes, Right? You know, once you've gone down the same road enough times, have you ever, you're like, oh, I've got to swing into this store, which is on the way to my house, but you suddenly feel, realize that, oh, I've just pulled into my driveway. Why is that? Because you just get in this rut of, like, my brain says go. So you completely miss your turn. In fact, I think I saw someone miss their turn on the way coming into church this morning. They just kept on going. I don't know who, I'm not pointing anybody out. I just, I just happened to be looking out the window when that happened. I thought I got a kick out of it. But uh, we, we, we have these brain connections that happen. The more times you do something, it becomes ingrained. And things like that song, it's just like, yeah. You know, I, I hear that. And yet, then I read this scripture out of Isaiah, chapter, chapter 43. And it says, see, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not be aware of it? Shall you not perceive it? I'll even make a way in the wilderness. I am doing a new thing. Who gets excited when you think of God doing a new thing in your life? Do you get excited? Like, yeah, I want, like really, put your hand up. Do you want God to, do, to move fresh in your life, to move powerful, to move new? Absolutely, I do. I get excited about that. And yet, I have this nostalgia as well. Oh. USA, right? I don't know if they have that song like "Born in the Hungary" or you know your Germany. Or I don't know if they do that for other countries. No, maybe not. Okay, but we do in the U.S., right? And I'm like, yeah. But I, but but God's also saying He's like, I'm doing a new thing. The thing about this Isaiah, and I'm going to literally ditch half my message here. And so, if you have the notes, maybe we'll catch that. We'll pick that up in a couple weeks. Uh, but um, if you read Isaiah 43, it's, the, the heading over this chapter is the Redeemer of Israel. This is, it starts off with the story where, where God is bringing Israel out of bondage and how, how God is literally bringing the, setting the captives free. And he's telling them to remember. He's like, let's talk about these things. Look, look at these things. Remember when, when you walked up to the Red Sea and by my power... Uh, the prophet Isaiah is talking about the power of God split the Red Sea open and the water stood up. Right? You read, read the first couple of verses there. Uh, it says, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. So he's saying, remember what I did. Reflect on that, that nostalgia. Those powerful moments of delivery. Right? And how I brought you through the water. I brought you through the trial. I brought you through hard things and struggles in your life. He says, I am the Lord your God who brings forth chariot and horse, the army and the mighty men. I bring these out. And then in verse 18, this kind of, you know, he's got, the, the prophet has this beautiful flow, like remember all these things. And then verse 18 happens and it's, he says, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Wait a minute, Isaiah, what are you talking about? Do not remember these, these former things. I think what oftentimes happens, I love it when God does a new thing in my life. I desire to walk in God's blessing. But I think what happens, and we see this with Israel over, over and over, we even see it with the, the serpent, on the, the, the bronze serpent, where they... And he, they were healed uh, from the death that was going through their camp. 
And then they ended up bowing down to this same symbol. And sometimes we look at our old blessings, the old things that God has done in our life, and we almost, instead of worshiping God, we worship the old blessing. And he's saying, the, the prophet here, I believe, is saying, remember the things that I've done, but don't worship them. Don't let your old blessings get in the way of what I want to do now. Because behold, I am doing a new thing. I am bringing freedom to the captives. And not just the old way that I used to do it, because oftentimes we get focused on how he used to do it. I think what he's saying is remember what I did, but forget how I did it. I blessed you, but be prepared because I'm going to bless you a different way. And even now as our nation finds itself in some of these tumultuous times, these difficult times, even losing our identity, I think God is going to bring revival. God is going to bring awakening within the church, within our hearts, that is different than it's ever looked before. Amen? Are you open to that? Are you ready for that? Are you prepared to allow Him to work through you in that? We've been in this series where we're talking about, or week one, we were talking about indifference, ap- apathy, how we're just kind of, nah. Would you say that's kind of becoming prevalent in our country? Let me celebrate Memorial Day weekend. I'm not going to visit a graveside, but I'm going to barbecue some meat. Nah. Losing, even losing our focus. Losing heart for what's truly important. And we begin to get even this self-pride. We begin to get some, some self-sufficiency. Why do, why do I need God? I've got this. Right? Or maybe some, uh, some self-importance. It's, it's kind of about me. You know, let me get a, you know, a selfie and post it. Like, selfie, hashtag, love and church. But I'm only here, actually, because somebody drugged me here or tricked me to come here. And to really, what do I value? And to take time thinking about it. Or even some self-exaltation, to lift ourselves up. But we read this in, in Proverbs 16, 18, pride comes before destruction and haughtiness before a fall. Would you see, say pride and arrogance are kind of building up in our country right now? Look at me, right? In fact, I think there's a song that says, look at me, look at me, look at me. In fact, it was annoying because it said, look at me so many times. You know what song I'm talking about? Do young people know? No? Yeah, you know, you know what I'm talking about. I don't even know, I don't even want to... Uh, try and say it because it actually drives me crazy. Um, but it, it's just it, this rapper kind of going off about that. Uh, and this, this self exaltation. Pride comes before destruction and haughtiness before a fall. I think we've got some praying to do for our country. I think we as Christians, those of us that put God first, need to do some some deep heart examination. We talked that first week about uh, ap- you know being ap- you know complacent, indifferent. You know, well, I'll just browse over that. I won't really engage in things that are poor. I won't fight for life. I won't. Uh, stand up for the causes that are important. So indifference. And then we talked about that, that empty worship, that hollow worship, where we don't really uh, focus on worshiping God with our whole being. It's, for many, it's a Sunday morning thing where true worship is meant to be with, in, in spirit and in truth, where we conform our lives to God's Word. You know, one of the most powerful things to watch is like, for me, I love watching the Marine Corps silent drill team. You ever watch them? One of the most powerful things has nothing to do with personal self-identity. None of those men in there are saying, look at me. Hi, Mom, smiling and waving, right? They are in line. They are achieving a mission. And the only thing you hear is the clicking of their rifles and the snapping of their boots and the tapping on the ground. 
as they're keeping a rhythm, and this, this machine that, that is achieving this, this, this excellence. They're living for a cause. And they're putting themselves aside and saying, I recognize an authority. Even, even just now looking up and seeing that cross on top of there, I have a, a much deeper respect for the flag itself. And I already had a, refle- a, a, a deep respect for this nation. But even now seeing that, it deepens that for me. But to recognize that I, I come before something and I submit. I come before my God and I submit my ways to Him. Lord, Your Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will follow what You have for me. Help me conform my life to You so I worship You in the ways that I live, in the things that I do. Lord, when I have sin in my heart, remove it from me. I turn from my sin, I repent, and I follow after You. And that's not what our country is about so much anymore. And I wouldn't say altogether, because we have amazing men and women in this room that right now you will love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Amen? You love God. And yet in our country we see this drift it's happening faster and faster. I submit myself to God's ways rather than mine. I worship Him. And also, I live true. We talked about hypocrisy. I live true. I will not say one thing and do another. In fact, uh, one of the most loving things that I, that I heard recently, one of the most loving things that you can do is to look someone in the eye and tell them the truth. And I believe that God's Word is doing that to us today. The truth is real. There is an absolute truth. And He is God. And He has a way for our lives. We also talked about the woman at the well and how... We, find, we, we look for things to replace God. And Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. He is that stream of living water that flows out of us, that refreshes us, that empowers us ultimately to do what? To be witnesses. Last week, Pentecost Sunday, it's not just about, about shouting out in church. It's not just about exuberant worship. It's not just about speaking in tongues or using the gifts of the Spirit. Those are all great, but it's so that we can go into all the world, preach the gospel, make disciples, teaching people to obey God's Word. Amen? That's why God empowers us. That's why God saved us. The wrap-up verse that I had in my notes is Matthew 5.16. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. When I would live my life for Jesus, Lord, help me to never live it so that I am exalted, so I am lifted up. Lord, help me always humbly come before you in submission to you to lift you up so that people look at my life and say, I want to be a Christian like that. I want to love God like that. In fact, as we wrap up, if you'd stand with me, oh, if you'd be willing to play. Heavenly Father, Lord, I believe that you are doing a new work. Lord, I believe that you are bringing this church somewhere, that we are going somewhere as a church, and that you are doing a new thing. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us to remember the things that you've done in the past. But Lord, I pray that you'd help us to worship you, not just those old things. Help us to take honor and and respect and even even a good, healthy pride in, in this nation. But Lord, help us to be a part of the solution as we go forward. And we even read in Isaiah where in verse in verse 19. He says, see, I will do a new thing. Now now I shall spring forth. Shall you not be aware of it? I will even make a way in the wilderness where they found themselves and rivers in the desert. The problem before they needed Jesus to help them overcome was rivers. Now the solution that he is bringing is rivers. 
So sometimes the struggle that we've gone through that God has delivered us from, he's going to use that struggle to bring our next blessing. And I hope you see that as God works in your life. And if you're willing to be a part of that solution, be a willing to, to rise up to be a man or a woman of honor, of integrity, to stand up for, for the ways that our God has established for us to live by, to put Him first and foremost in your life, and you live your life in a way that is sacrificial. Live your life in a way that other people can see it and glorify God. If you'd lift your hand up right now and join me. God, I desire my life to be used for you. And make this even right where you are right now as your altar. Father, here I am. Lord, I don't want to die. But if you call me to, here I am. And be, be a sacrifice for something good. Help me to live my life beyond me. Help me to live my life for my friends, for my family, for my co-workers. Help me to stand for causes that are right and true and noble. Right now, church, can you just pray this with me? Heavenly Father, fill me with your spirit. Empower me to do your work. Mold my heart. Strengthen my feet. Embolden my voice in a, in a, in a time that needs to hear of you. Let me stand for what's right. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I do want to ask, I don't want to miss this opportunity this morning. As we continue to pray, I believe that there's some, that when we talk about sacrifice, when we talk about bloodshed, every head bowed and every eye closed, if there's some, someone in here that we talk about the, the, the death of a soldier for a good cause. We talk about Jesus because he died to take away your sins. And if you're here this morning and the Holy Spirit has been prompting you, that you've been holding on to sin, and that you have not surrendered your life to Jesus, and today he's saying, today's your day. I want to take away your sin. I want to set you free. And I want to make you spiritually alive. If you've never asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, would you be so bold today to say, yes, I need to ask Jesus my Lord and Savior. Would you slip your hand up right now? I want to make eye contact with you. Today I need to ask Jesus my Lord and Savior. Just slip your hand up. I believe that there's at least one person in this room today that God is leading your heart to ask forgiveness. To receive Him as your Lord and Savior as, as most everyone in this room has done. Jesus paid the ultimate price for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for being honest. Anyone else would say, that's me today. I need to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord God. Let's pray this prayer together, all of us. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross so my sins could be taken away. Thank you for being raised to new life giving me new life. Today I receive that. Cleanse me. Purify my heart. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And we have this promise from God's Word that when we ask Jesus into our heart, we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away and the new are coming. Isn't that wonderful? And as believers, no matter how old you are, New things are coming. New things are coming. Behold, Isaiah 43, 19. Behold, I am making all things new. With that, have a very blessed Memorial Day weekend. God bless you.